burst of the first tank occurred at well above the required pressure. The tank ruptured in the base metal and not at a weld. The cryogenic subsystem also provides the coolant for environmental control system heat exchangers. Initial work by Air Research was directed toward verification of core design. Fabrication of a prototype hydrogen glycol primary cooler has aided in establishing manufacturing techniques to cope with complicated configurations and zero leakage requirements. Testing of the prototype unit will aid in development of the cooling package control valving and verify performance of other components such as fans and the glycol water pump package. Boeing activated a remote test facility to conduct cryogenic subsystem design development tests. As planned, the first tests were conducted using a boilerplate, supercritical hydrogen tank, and compact heat exchangers to evaluate the basic tank pressurization loop. Prototype components will be used where desirable, and the test will be expanded in steps until all major elements of the cryogenic subsystem are under test. The Dinosaur Accessory Power Unit and its components are under development at Sunstrand, Denver. Early development work on the breadboard control system was initiated by conversion of an existing APU to operate on hydrogen-oxygen fuel. This approach was also valuable in test facility and operator checkout prior to testing the Dinosaur Prototype APU. Dinosaur will use the first hydrogen-oxygen APU to be developed for an operational system. Testing of the prototype APU with a Rene 41 Super Alloy wheel is scheduled for mid-1962. The integrated environmental control secondary power subsystem will be tested in the new Boeing Remote Environmental Test Facility. The large environmental test chamber has an internal volume of 10,000 cubic feet. A steam ejector system provides the vacuum source for producing simulated altitudes up to 200,000 feet within the chamber. It is also supplied with electrical power to maintain test temperatures up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Data from the entire test complex is fed into a data acquisition center. The high-speed data readout system has 200 channels and can sample 5,000 data points per second. Flight simulation was established early in the program. A six degree of freedom flight simulator is used to define glider flight control system concepts compatible with constraints unique to the dinosaur system. With the early establishment of flight control system concepts, simulation would aid achievement of these results. Determination and verification of glider handling qualities, especially in hypersonic flight. Verification of glider configuration details influenced by stability and control considerations. Determination of manual flight control requirements, visual displays, and pilot techniques. And demonstration of safe re-entry controllability. The cockpit in this control system simulator has the same interior shape, size, instrument displays, controls, seat, and restraint system that will be in the glider. Control surface activity, actuator effects, and guidance and control system inputs are all electronically simulated. Analog computers duplicate the aerodynamic behavior of the vehicle and vehicle response to guidance system commands or control inputs from the pilot under all flight conditions. The simulator has been utilized in a manner similar to flight tests with an actual flight vehicle. The assistance of Air Force and NASA consultant pilots assigned to the dinosaur program has contributed much to the success of the evaluations. Their experience in research aircraft, especially the X-15, has been extremely valuable and has provided the reference needed for relating dinosaur simulator characteristics to flight vehicles of that type. Simulation of the boost phase and the obtaining of baseline data for the Johnsville Centrifuge program was accomplished during March 1962. The program is now acquiring valuable engineering data as well as developing pilot techniques and capability throughout the entire dinosaur flight regime. Simulation of flight dynamics will continue to play an important role in dinosaur vehicle and subsystem development. Important strides toward the attainment of program goals and objectives have been accomplished by the Radio Corporation of America. 
RCA, an associate contractor, is assigned the responsibility for the design, development, and integration of the communication and tracking subsystem. The super high frequencies utilized in this subsystem have been especially selected to provide communication and data transmission through the ion sheath, which surrounds the glider during re-entry. SHF also permits communication with the glider through the trailing plume of ionized particles which follows the air vehicle during the boost phase of flight. The redirection to an orbital program greatly extended the time during which the ion sheath surrounds the glider during re-entry, thus magnifying the importance of SHF frequencies for the communication and tracking subsystem. A new systems analysis was necessary to evaluate changes required in equipment specifications. Fabrication and integration of the breadboard models of all ground-to-air and air-to-ground components of the subsystem have been accomplished in accordance with these revised requirements. In addition, performance tests were conducted at RCA as preliminary to integration testing of the airborne communication data subsystem and the technical instrumentation subsystem. The first year development phase of the antenna system for the communication tracking network was centered at Radiation Incorporated, Melbourne, Florida. As subcontractor to RCA, Radiation has successfully integrated the complete research model of the antenna system. A unique feature of this self-tracking ground antenna system is its capability to receive and transmit simultaneously with one antenna. The system has been tested and the results will be used to further engineering development of the 12-foot antenna design required for orbital flight. Test results indicate that the communication and tracking subsystem equipment will meet the required specification, design, and performance objectives of the revised program. A compatibility test program for the communication tracking and test instrumentation subsystems was conducted by Boeing at Electromechanical Research, Sarasota, Florida. The primary test objectives were to ensure satisfactory performance and interface compatibility between the communication tracking subsystem and test instrumentation subsystem equipment. Evaluation of test results has not been completed. Program redirection did not alter the basic concept of the Honeywell Glider primary guidance subsystem, which utilizes a stable platform to measure glider accelerations. Development of subsystem components proceeded according to schedule. Program redirection did eliminate the secondary attitude reference subsystem because of the new orbital requirements. The dinosaur orbital flight plan also placed more stringent performance requirements on resolvers for the glider guidance system. As a part of the development test program, the resolvers were tested to standards imposed by the dinosaur mission. Data recorded on individual resolver tests were inserted into a data computer and a detailed analysis was made. Analysis provided test data on the accuracy of resolver units when connected in series. The new booster has not as yet affected the Honeywell Glider Guidance Subsystem configuration except for computer reprogramming for the new flight profile. Several Verdan computers have been received by Honeywell from their subcontractor, the Autonetics Division of North American Aviation. In addition to checkout and normal maintenance activities, the computers and associated test equipment were utilized for the reduction of system analytical data. Other major components for the glider primary guidance subsystem research model were fabricated and tested. Fabrication of the coupler electronics unit with its 12 plug-in subassemblies was completed in April 1962, and the unit was married into the guidance system along with the inertial measuring unit, computer, and aerospace ground equipment. Cable harnessing and subassembly fabrication for the first coupler electronics unit development model also was completed. Specification testing for this unit continued on schedule. Design configuration for the inertial measuring unit remains essentially unchanged, and fabrication and testing of the research model unit was completed on schedule. Fabrication and assembly of inertial measuring unit components for the developmental glider primary guidance subsystem is in progress. Development of major test sets for the aerospace ground equipment progressed on schedule. Fabrication of the test set, which will be used to check out the inertial measuring unit at the field test site,